Welcome to today's webinar with Hayes. Um, today is actually, it's our second in our DNA of series, and obviously today is uh, all about the DNA of a CIO. Thank you all very, very much for joining us. I believe that we have somewhere in the region of about 200 people dialed into today's sessions. So I hope you all find it very productive. As Christine mentioned, my name is Rowan O'Grady. I'm the president of Hayes in Canada. I've been in the specialist recruitment business and with Hayes for 20 years now, eight of those, or almost nine actually, those based here in Toronto. Um, the reason behind this idea, the DNA series, was for, you know, for us to be able to understand and to share that understanding um, with some certainty as to what is it that it actually takes to reach the top of your profession in Canada. And as one of Canada's leading recruiters for the information technology section, We've got the means um, and we've got the expertise to be able to answer that. And it would appear from the amount of interest that we've had in this project so far that there's a clear demand for the answers. So why not find out? Um, I should also mention here that, that the insights and the findings that we have, are, they're relevant to anyone really with ambitions to progress their management career in IT, whether that includes actually becoming the CIO or not, it doesn't really matter so much. Um, so what I'm going to show you over the next 20 minutes or so, if I can stay on time, is a preview of the full report. With a few minutes at the end, as Christine mentioned, you can type your questions into the chat box um, and we'll answer as many of those as we can. Um, the full report is going to be released on Tuesday after the long weekend, May 20th, um, but you can go now to our website to request a copy, which is hayes.ca slash dna, and you can go and request a copy. So how do you find out what it takes to become a CFO in Canada? Well, we did a couple of different things to work that out. So one, the first thing was we surveyed 100 of Canada's leading CIOs, or sorry, become a CIO in Canada, I should say. Um, we surveyed 100 of Canada's leading CIOs, um, all currently working in Canada, and we looked at their uh, qualifications, their education, their industry experience, challenges they've uh, experienced, the mistakes that they've made. Um, and we've also done a deep dive analysis of another 100 CIO resumes to really get into the nitty gritty of their resume and also to look at how do they actually present themselves. And then finally, we interviewed four of Canada's leading CIOs um, from Microsoft, from Kinross Gold, City of Toronto and Wind Mobile to get, to get their insight and advice on how they got to where they are today. We've created a short video and that's available and can be found on hayes.ca slash DNA right now, um, or at least wait until the webinar is over. It's really, really good, actually. I'd, I'd strongly rec recommend that you check it out. There's some excellent advice in there. So the first piece of data that I can share with you is that 98% of CIOs are apparently happy with their career choice. So if you are an aspiring CIO and you make it there, then it's highly likely that you're gonna be very happy that you did. Um, but having said that, 44% said that they've second guessed their career at some point. So it's very normal to wonder if you're actually on the right path and to experience doubt along the way under uh, under own success. So if you're in that boat, you're probably in good company. Um, just a little bit about the respondents um, as some context. So the majority of respondents were from Ontario, BC or Alberta, as you can see. Um, most CIOs, 68%, got into a career in IT because they had a real passion for it. That was actually significantly higher than why people got into a career in finance. So um, IT would appear to be something that's more of a, a vocation type of career than finance is. Um, vast majority age between 40 and 60 years old and very much male dominated. And, and when you see that, like that, that level of domination there, that, that really generates then a whole raft of questions about women in IT um, and how to affect that. And you know, we all know there's a skill shortage in IT already, but you know, when both the NACCB, CCP, and the ITC tier are saying that that's only going to get worse, and we all know that it's probably only going to get worse, um, you know, by 2020, there's going to be a shortage of thousands of IT professionals, and that's obviously really just exacerbated by the fact that half of the population seems to be ruled out due to uh, an absence um, of women in IT. And we, we believe a lot of that's really got to do with a lack of awareness about the careers available to young women in the IT sector. Um, but anyway, attracting, attracting more women into the IT profession is a major issue and one that there really remains a lot of work to be done um, on before we can feel that we're really making any progress. 
Um, just a, a, another side point, um, we rarely really pass up an opportunity to get a little insight into what's on people's minds in an industry. So we asked a, a couple of extra questions here about their views on the industry, health and, and potential growth. Um, we asked how often do you worry about being outsourced, and the majority actually don't, which is very encouraging for the local industry here in Canada. There's a small percentage of people who do, but nothing significant. And then on expectation for growth of the industry, um, that's certainly there, but half saying that the current climate will carry on, and I think we don't say that the IT industry is quite healthy right now in Canada and growing. And then the rest saying the things would grow faster in the coming five years. So overall, there's confidence in the growth of the industry, um, little concern about, about being outsourced, so all good news there. So really, on, on this topic, the DNA of a CIO, we asked ourselves this simple question. We said, what is the path to actually becoming a successful CIO? And when we sat down to look at all of the results from the survey, and when we looked at the one-to-one -one interviews with our CIOs, a few key themes kept coming through. Like, fundamentally, um, there is no single route to becoming the CIO, and it would appear that, that the path to that position is becoming less and less traditional as time goes on. So, you know, previously, or a, a few years ago, it, it was, it was um, common that you'd work your way up from being a junior programmer to becoming a senior programmer, on to becoming a director, and then ultimately, um, and hopefully, becoming the CIO. Now, really, people are coming from far more varied backgrounds. Um, you're seeing people co coming from a number of backgrounds, and certainly, regardless of where you're starting from, they follow different paths. So, having said that, um, there is a pattern um, more based on experience and capabilities as opposed to straight line progression just simply through levels of seniority, um, which I'll, I will show you here. Um, so in analyzing the resumes, the 100 resumes, but we're really more so based on the survey results and the interviews that we carried out. The path is based on a progression through these three key areas. So first of all, having a solid technical foundation to your career is virtually essential, um, which we'll look at in just a moment. And without that, really becoming a CEO seems very unlikely, which is perhaps obvious, or you know, it should, probably is obvious. Um, secondly, you've got the development of leadership skills, and, and they're often gained when starting to manage your own projects, and, and that starts to bring the individual to a point where they're not really as reliant on their technical skills alone, but they're starting to mobilize and, and motivate other people as the leader of that group or as the, the manager of that project. And then finally, and really the key component that was highlighted by so many CIOs is the development of business acumen. So how does your role add value to the organization really in terms of, of dollars and cents? So to highlight that, progress, to, to highlight that progression, if you just take a look at the graphic at the bottom of the screen there. We asked how, how much time was spent um, on the technical skills versus soft skills as their career progressed. And as you can see, there's a consistent an increased focus on soft skills as the individual becomes more and more senior, um, and as the role transitions really from being a technical role to being more of a leadership role. Just to put, put a little bit of shape then on, on the rest of the session, I'm going to take each of these three areas individually, so essential qualifications and experiences, becoming an effective leader, and then finally developing a business acumen, so I'll take the, one at a time. So, on qualifications that really matter, as I mentioned, um, we analyzed 100 resumes of CIOs in Canada, we looked at the qualifications, designations, um, and we've documented the results in the full report. I've, I've just posted a shot from the full report here on the top right, just so you can see how it looks. But for now, we've just pulled a couple of the key highlights for you. So we looked at education. The vast majority, uh, as you would expect, have, have a technical qualification of some sort, many with electrical engineering qualification or computer science. I do wonder whether that's going to change now, obviously, because most of the CIOs are between 40 and 60 years old, and in 20 years' time, I'd be surprised if, if it's still electrical engineering or computer science, as people are just self-started at this stage. Um, some with a more general Bachelor of Science degree. And then you've got 25% gained of technical education with a post-grad qualification, and then over one quarter have an MBA. Um, just on that point, 31% of respondents said that having an MBA is imperative to the role of a CIO. And just bearing in mind um, the highlighting of the need for strong business acumen, that, that obviously makes a lot of sense and, and isn't really surprising that a, an MBA would be very beneficial. 
So we looked at um, skills, experience, and achievements. And again, full findings are in the report, but just hi highlight a couple of key points here. The vast majority have not progressed by just having experience in only one or two areas. Virtually all of the individuals we looked at had some experience in virtually all of the areas listed here. So development, infrastructure, consulting, architecture, ERP, and project management. So the message here is that the CIOs have a mixed and broad experience of the IT industry as opposed to simply being a deep expert in just one area. They may be a deep expert in one area, but they also have a mixed and broad experience um, of many other areas. Um, how about how the CIOs are actually presenting themselves then on their resumes? 60% um, don't actually list their technical skills, such as you know, specific courses or things like Microsoft certifications. But what they are doing is listing general areas of expertise, such as mobile, cloud, or project management. Um, and that makes sense, especially for the more senior candidates. As you, know, you think about it, the minutia of their skills isn't really as important as, as the overall capabilities that the individual might have. Um, Another, another point of interest, after the obvious answer of well, education and work experience, we asked what was their key selling point? Um, and 73% believed that, that was answered through showing their professional accomplishments. So not just selling the point that, that they'd worked somewhere for X number of years and that they'd held whatever position there, but actually highlighting what they'd accomplished there um, and the specifics of it. And I think, you know, from my point of view as a professional recruiter, and I, I make my living from interviewing, I would really agree with that. I think hearing detailed and specific examples of actual accomplishments speaks volumes, and, and it really builds confidence like nothing else can. Um, the next phase is then the transition from being a technical expert to being an effective leader. So if you look here, leadership and people management is certainly seen as the most important of the soft skills for a CIO, with 80% agreeing with that. Um, but that certainly doesn't mean that, that developing those leadership or people management sk skills is easy, far from it. Um, if you take a look at the bottom left graphic here, we asked what was the biggest mistake they'd made in their professional careers, and, and uh, uh, you know, dominant 48% that it was a managerial error that they had made. So you may be the most technically gifted person in your role, but that doesn't necessarily help you when it comes to communicating with others or understanding others or actually motivating other people. And in response to that, you can see there that a lot of CIOs are investing in themselves or taking leadership training courses, obviously to strengthen their ability um, as a leader um, and as a people manager. Um, a, a good IT professional's likelihood of progressing towards a senior management um, position, it's, it's really largely dependent on their ability to be able to build relationships within the organization. And I think the more senior the person gets, the more important those relationships actually are. And as you would expect, um, the challenge to achieve the next promotion increases as you progress. But 35%, just on the top left here, saying that promotion to the executive level was the most challenging. Hence the need, obviously, to ensure that the relationships that you've developed internally are very, very strong. Um, and again, this isn't really easy for everybody. Um, interestingly, 50% of CIOs said that they would consider themselves introverts. But having said that, obviously, they've achieved their position nonetheless. So, you know, overcoming that potentially and, and working on internal relationships is very important. So we, asked, we also asked just on the same kind of topic, we asked what are the most important characteristics of CIO, and the top three were collaborative, being goal-oriented and ethical. So again, you know, in the top three characteristics, a, a real and clear focus on soft skills. Um, so if you're in, in your role and you're thinking about, well, where exactly do I prioritize my focus on internal networking? I don't have to you know, focus on uh, developing relationships with everybody in every department. Um, so where do you focus that networking and relationship building? It's probably most likely that, that the number one place to start would be a focus on the guys who are in operations within the business. 47% of CIOs said that operations is the most important area to partner with, which obviously makes a lot of sense. Um, and thirdly and finally on this point, um, you can't be an effective leader without having a great team. So, so getting the right people onto the team is absolutely paramount. 39% um, of CIOs um, said that they got their current roles through networking. 
um, or referrals from friends or colleagues. But that means to be able to get the right people on your team, you obviously need to be very well networked. Um, it's also worth mentioning um, that another 30% got their role through a specialist recruitment company. So knowing a very good recruitment company, someone like Hayes, is obviously very valuable too. Um, we asked some questions just about networking externally, it came through as a really important element. So over 75% saying that it was very too extremely important and that networking is being done obviously through a number of mediums from real life socializing to unsurprisingly online social networking. Um, so either way, and especially for the more introverted person, I think you've really got to be conscious of the need for that outward facing component of your role. So building relationships in, internally and dedicating the time and the effort to networking externally as well. Um, just as a slight aside on that topic, so we're, we're getting more, asked more and more often about recruitment through social media or even about, you know, what is it to have a digital recruitment strategy. Um, I think, you know, in my opinion, recruitment online now is it's a lot more than just posting a job on a job board or having um, access to social networks. I think as advertising mechanisms just seem to get more and more advanced, um, job seekers don't really need to search for the job ad and, and the jobs are almost proactively coming to them through very sophisticated and, and quite targeted promotion. Um, and I think that's what Generation Y have actually come to expect now, which means as an employer looking to recruit, you've really got to be able to bring your jobs to people, which in a nutshell is really through three avenues. You know, knowing that you've got a social media strategy, um, ensuring that what you have is, is um, workable and friendly to use on, on mobile technology and on tablets, tablets and, and your overall online strategy. And I think the, making sure that all of the elements of that plan actually complement each other and are consistent in the message takes time and it takes effort. And I think really technology seems to have made having a solid recruitment strategy even more difficult than before as opposed to making it more easy. And I could say I could talk about this for some time, but we do not really have the time and um, we're on a different topic. So um, finally, just to, um, just to look at business acumen, which seems to be the most important part of becoming a CIO. I think with the move towards the cloud, you know, the, the days of the CIO being responsible for just looking after the infrastructure of the organization seem to be fading into the background more and more. And, and it's, it's now about really bridging the gap between the technical communities and, and the business communities. So let's have a look at this one. So we asked what was the single most important aspect of the role of the CFO, and here's what people said. So the top three were providing solutions to helping the organization meet goals, um, strategic planning, and thirdly, commercial understanding. And all of those could be classified really as business acumen. And after that, then you've got leadership skills and finally the technical and operational knowledge. And when you think about it, it's actually the inverse of the career path, which, which makes sense. So if you're at the start of your career, the message here is the importance of a sound technical background and understanding. If you're at the mid-level of your career, it shows the need to, to really perfect those communication, management, and, and motivation skills. And obviously, if you're at the senior end or approaching the senior end or aspirations to get there, you should really be adding value to the organization and having a direct impact on the organization's ability to achieve their goals and, and really understand the important part that, that IT plays in doing that and, and being able to communicate that. Um, however, you know, if you say develop your business acumen, I think that's a great statement, but what does that actually mean? And then how do you go about doing it? So firstly, I, I think really what it means is, can you add value to the organization in terms of you know, facilitate, facilitating strategy? Are you saving money? Are you bringing improved efficiencies? Are you, are you adding competitive advantage to the organization? And ultimately, like are you having an impact on improving revenues? Or are you improving profits? Um, but how, how do you actually start to move towards doing that in, in your role? Um, a very common piece of advice from the CIOs that we interviewed was to develop the ability to be able to take a step back and start seeing the big picture of an organization. And a way of starting to do that is to gain experience in other areas, areas other than IT. So 60% of CIOs have worked in areas other than IT. The most popular was experience in operations. Um, those who are aspiring to be IT leaders they really have to understand the inner workings of running a business, and, and frankly, the only way you can do that is by actually being exposed to it directly. Um, but it's obvious why people would want to then gain experience outside of IT. You need to be able to understand how the business works, to be able to communicate how IT can achieve the goals of a department, 
um, the communication skills just become absolutely essential. If, if, if an IT department is actually separated away from the rest of the business and, and they're only called upon when the IT systems fail, and we're familiar with that idea, you know, they don't exist until something goes wrong, um, but if that is the case, then that department or leader of that department would struggle in being able to really add value to the organization. So you really need to be able to develop relations with people in other departments and other leaders in the business just to understand, understand how they work and what their goals are. Then finally, can, can you make the link between business goals and IT capabilities? So 43% of CIOs said that the most important aspect of the role is providing solutions to meet organizational needs. And, and Steve Heck, he's the Microsoft Canada CIO, said it best. He said, the CIO doesn't have to be the most adept technologist in the room. However, he or she must understand what technology can offer and then connect that back to business objectives. Um, so that's everything on the, on the preview of the report. I think I'm pretty much on time, maybe a minute or two over. So I'll just finish with a couple of, uh, like a very short summary, and then um, just a couple of recommendations from our perspective as recruitment consultants. So the, the key findings could be summarized as follows. Number one, having a sound and broad technical background is the foundation or really the basis to starting out on the path to becoming a CIO. Um, transitioning into a leader requires a real focus on developing and improving the soft skills, and maybe it doesn't come naturally to, to everybody. And then if you've got the first two, then really making a step towards becoming a CIO largely depends on your ability to be able to demonstrate that all-important business acumen. Our recommendations to like a budding CIO or anyone really looking to progress their, their management career in IT is simple. Number one, you've got to gain a, a broad range of experience, and, and, and to do that, you've got to be open to new opportunities and new challenges. Um, secondly, you know, think about moving towards project management, and, and it's a great place to start to develop your leadership skills that are absolutely essential. And then finally, you've got to get to know people in your business, you've got to get to know the business, and work out then how can IT make that strategy happen, and how can it make life easier and improve results. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes to spare to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so um, if you have, you can just type it into the chat box, and I can read them out, and then we'll attempt, we'll attempt to answer them. And we've also got Travis O'Rourke here. Travis leads our IT recruitment business in Canada. He's very experienced in recruitment for the IT sector. Um, he's here to help me with the answers. And we've also got Taya Watson. She's our marketing director. Taya was responsible for actually carrying out the research and the analysis of what I've just shown you. Um, so as we're waiting for questions, um, just to request a copy of the full report, as I said, you can go to hayes.ca slash DNA. And you can view the video there too, or on YouTube at YouTube slash Hayes North America. So we'll just have a look to see um, what questions we have. Um, so the first question is the traditional question everybody seems to ask straight away, which is, can you send us these slides? Well, we'll do better than that, actually. We've got the, um, we've got the, um, all of the, we've recorded the webinar, and it'll be posted on YouTube immediately after. Um, so obviously all of the slides will be there, and you'll have the audio with us as well, so um, better than getting the slides. Um, I have another question, somebody is saying, um, let's see, how many, of the C, how many of the CIOs have international experience? Where's the most common area for that, in, in, for that international experience? So how many people have international experience, and where are they getting that experience from? Um, so we, we do have this, actually. So they said 60% um, said that they had had international experience, and the most common areas in order were predominantly the US, which is unsurprising, then Western Europe, followed by Asia, and finally South America. And then interestingly, I don't know whether this means anything or not, but a 42% list having international experience on their resume. Um, so 60% have, but only 42% listed, so I'm not sure whether that means anything or not. But it would appear, you know, the majority of people have worked um, outside of the country. Um, there's a question here. So somebody is saying, have you considered? Um, let me just read this. So the question is, have you considered doing DNA of a job hunter series? The social media component and best practices. This could be geared to both hunters and organisations looking at the roles filled. It's changed so much over the last five years that many. 
uh, thrown into the fire looking for direction and guidance. Well, yeah, um, we hadn't actually considered doing that. Um, this is really trying to talk about getting to the, you know, the top of your profession in the areas that we specialize in, which are predominantly accounting and finance, IT, and construction or real estate. Um, I think on that topic, you know, deciphering, you know, making sense out of digital, uh, a digital recruitment strategy is a good point, and it seems to just get more and more complicated um, for people, and it is something that we spend a huge amount of time and effort on um, trying to decipher ourselves. Um, how can we connect current CIOs if they don't know us for guidance? Um, I think is that a question to do with how can CIOs ask for advice from the CIOs that we asked the um, questions from, or, perhaps? Or managers. Or, yeah, okay, so managers actually who are aspiring to get there, um, how would they be able to get that advice? Um, like we've, I think we're, we're, we're creating um, IT groups on LinkedIn that you could join and we share and put out a lot of content on that and, and when you connect to us on that, you'll see the list of people who we're connected to and it's, um, there, I, I doubt there are people there who wouldn't be able to answer any question that you would have, so you can certainly do that. Um, were all the CIOs surveyed within the Canada Fortune 100 area? Um, no, I don't think they technically were actually. We, we selected a number of them. Um, we had 100 responses to the survey that we had, so I think we probably sent the survey to twice, if not three times as many as that, because not everybody would fill the survey in, obviously, which is normal. So no, they were not all from um, Canada Fortune 100, but a fair proportion of them were. Um, I think actually probably one of the best things, to, to if, if you're short of time, that video that we produce is, I think it's like three, four minutes long, um, and then the advice in there is excellent and the insight's excellent. I strongly advise people to go and have a look at that. Um, another question, so saying, based on the findings, what functional areas outside of IT do the CIOs today have experience in? Right, so I kind of answered that. The, the most um, popular area is within operations, so 40% of the CIOs have experience of working in operations. Um, and that was followed up by 30% in engineering, which kind of makes sense. I, I, there's a fair proportion who come from an engineering background and then progressed into being the CIO. And then 20% in marketing, um, particularly people who had come through from uh, online or digital marketing um, was quite popular as well. Um, here's another question, perhaps Travis can help me with this. So the question is, being promoted inside the company is it the only way to reach the position of being the CIO, or do you think companies can hire a CIO that never has that has never been a CIO before, CIO before, but has a lot of experience? Okay, so is it is it that you'd have to get promoted into the position internally into your organisation, um, or could somebody get promoted into that or offer that position in a new organisation where they technically haven't held that role before? Right. So, what would you think, Travis? I'd say uh, it's probably about a fair mix at this point. I think one of the, the things that makes uh, an external CIO attractive is the fact that they have exposure to other businesses and they can come in with a fresh set of eyes. So it's definitely, definitely a big value add to organizations to see how their competitors are doing things or how people uh, on the other side of the pond uh, are getting things done. Now, I guess to answer this, the second uh, point, is it possible to become a CIO without that exposure prior? And I guess the answer is absolutely. If you're coming from an environment where, I mean, you're supporting, I mean, 50,000 users at a VP or a senior director level, um, the logical next step would be to be a CIO at an organization where maybe you only have 10 or 15,000 users. So you can still have that technical expertise, but it'll give you a little bit more time to ramp up uh, on the business acumen uh, that Rowan's indicated is so important. <clears throat> also, like obviously, you have to become the CIO for at some point. Like you weren't, and then you were. So everybody, everybody was offered a C. Everybody who is a CIO previously wasn't. Like it's an obvious thing, but you have to get the job. It has to be your first role in the CIO at some point. So yes. And um, somebody has said here, my work is about 80% in IT areas. So I have to say, my hope of being a CIO um, could be hard because my experience under functional areas isn't so good, or should I do something else? Remember, I am 40 years old, and I need to find work from another country. Um, 
I'm not sure if that's the person saying they're currently in another country and trying to move. But having said that, like if, if 80 percent of your experience is in IT, then 20 percent isn't, which would be probably a damn sight better than a lot of guys um, operating in IT. They're almost exclusively in that area sometimes. So I would say it would depend largely on what that piece of experience is. Um, we have seen um, people getting that experience not by design. A lot of the time they get the experience in other areas almost by coincidence. So they may take a, a new role in a new organization and it turns out or part of the job happens to be being exposed to or managing in a, a new area, perhaps because the company is small. You see that a lot actually. People coming through small to medium sized organizations have a more rounded experience because they've been exposed to lots of different functional areas. Um, a common thing that people have said is, you know, trying to follow a specific path, saying I need to get this experience next and that's what I'm going to go and do, didn't seem very popular amongst the CIOs. It was more and just being open to opportunities and being flexible as to the kind of roles that they would take. In time, over 15 years, over 20 years, it turned out that they had done lots of different things. So I think really it's about being open-minded and being flexible as to the responsibilities that you take on and in time you've, you've developed a more rounded career or a more rounded skill set. Um, another one, I think this is probably the last one um, for now. So I've, I've noticed that in the public service, a trend of more and more CIOs being appointed without a technical background. Did you notice this trend in your surveys of the private sector? Um, I am not sure. I don't know, Travis, Taya, could you answer that? I think that that largely will depend uh, on the size of the organization, whether uh, in, in the public sector, um, usually there's a, there's a lot more cash on hand in that organization and they may actually have a CIO and a CTO. And for that reason, I think um, you'll see that result. Whereas again, in the private sector, a lot of the times, especially with publicly traded companies, uh, where costs are a little bit tighter, you'll see a CIO kind of wearing both hats. Okay, good. I think we've probably taken up enough of your time. Uh, thank you very, very much for dialing in. Um, as I said, you can go to hayes.ca slash DNA and you'll be able to request a copy. You'll find um, a link to the recording of the webinar. You'll find a link to the video that we've created as well. Um, if you want to contact us for questions, if we can be of assistance in any way, please contact us or you contact me directly. It's rowan.ograde at hayes.com. Uh, thank you to everybody who's involved in making the report, in particular to the four CIOs who helped us with the video. Um, thank you very much um, and best of luck.